Hello again, year four. Happy Monday. Hope you have a lovely weekend and had lots of rest and ready for fantastic learning this week. Now, I am so excited because our task this week is linked to our story, Bear Wolf, that we've been listening to in our whole class reader. And it's something the illustrator, Michael Foreman, has asked us to do. So, almost a drum roll, can we have a drum roll? And stop. We've been asked to create detailed descriptions to help the illustrator create new images for his book. So when you get to have a look at the story, there are some pictures inside there, but there aren't that many. And he wants us to create some really interesting descriptions to help him create some new images for the story, which I think is fabulous news. So before we get to that and our own creativeness comes through, we're going to have a look at our waggle. And it's based on that image. Now from the story you can remember that Beowulf set sail on a ship and he headed towards the Nordic coast and that is what he could have seen as he approached. So that would have been a little bit scary but quite exciting at the same time. And our lesson is using the text to help us understand vocabulary. So having a real vocabulary focus today. So, below the jagged cliffs lies an ocean of the dullest grey. The gentle waves lap slowly upon the shore, swallowing everything that rests upon it. Ripples in the water create the most soothing rhythm as they disappear into the distance. Deep under the surface, a horde of life springs into action whenever the current forces them in a particular direction. Above this, the tall jagged cliffs tower over the action and can see everything far into the horizon. A bed of luscious green grass blankets the white and brown cliffs, creating the most amazing contrast of colour and texture. The cliff looks almost eaten at the edges as a result of the constant battering of the waves. The tempestuous weather is evident in the grey, angry-looking clouds above. However, there is no precipitation, just a looming sense that it is coming at any moment. The contrast between the cool, smooth water and the harsh, jaggy cliff edges is stark. Rough rocks and edges as sharp as knives cut through anything that brushes against it. Growing from this, the smooth, slightly damp grass feels cool and soothing against the skin. As a result of the turbulent weather, the salt in the water scratches and scrapes everything in its path. There are moments when it surrounds and relaxes every muscle in the body, even though the saltiness can be extremely uncomfortable at times. The aroma of the freshly cut grass can be smelt for miles around, as well as the saltiness of the sea. Occasionally, huge gusts of cold wind sweep the grass smell far away and the overwhelming salt, salty smell is much more predominant. Walking along the cliff edge, there is a hint of mint, presumably from the small plants that grow near, and the intermittent smell of lavender too. If you close your eyes when you hear that, you can almost see all of those things. The description is quite detailed. You can imagine the water, you can imagine the grass and the smells and everything. And that is what you're going to be focusing on this week, really trying to create an atmosphere in your writing and using vocabulary really effectively because we know you can use adjectives and we know that you know how to describe. But actually it's applying that a little bit more and trying to create that atmosphere, that suspense in your writing. But before we get there, we need to look at the key skills in this text. So what I would like you to do is you're going to pause the video and I want you to have a look at anything in there that you think, yeah, we're going to have to focus on that as one of our skills this week to help us with our writing and to help make our writing the best it can be. So for example, I've got below the jaggy cliffs. Have a think what that could be an example of and are there any more in that text too? So pause the video now and have a look for these key skills and underline them in the text. 
Okay, brilliant. You should now have lots of underlining all the way through. And if you haven't managed to print it off, that is absolutely fine. You can have a look and see on the screen any examples that you've found. So, do yours match mine? Ta-da! So, as we said, we've got below the jaggy cliffs with a comma. Did you remember that's a fronted adverbial? I hope so. There are lots more in the text as well. We've got deep under the surface, above this, growing from this, occasionally. And each of those have got a comma after. We must remember our commas after fronted adverbials. Then there are lots of yellow on here. Jagged, dullest, gentle, deep, far, tempestuous. Have a think of what they are. Yeah, they're all adjectives and all examples of really good descriptive language. And then the last thing that I have found at the minute are underlining red as, whenever, and, however. Can you remember what they are? Fab, they are conjunctions. And I know you use conjunctions quite well in your writing. But we're going to expand upon these this term and we're going to use a much wider variety and use them a lot more effectively. So before I move on, we're just going to have a look at any vocabulary in the text that are a little bit, bit unusual and a little bit more tricky than normal. So the first word that I think we might not know what it means is horde. Now a horde is like a group. Or everything, a horde of life means all life, everything to do with life under the water. Our next word is, let me have a look, tempestuous. I love that word, that's one of my most favourite words in the whole wide world. Tempestuous weather. Now tempestuous weather means it's quite changeable, it could be quite stormy, it could be quite... Um, scary at times maybe it's definitely not a nice sunny calm day it could be raining or winding and that i know that it's also got about the gray angry looking clouds that links with the tempestuous weather a little bit and so does the word precipitation you might have heard that word in science at some point and precipitation means anything that falls from the clouds falls from the sky so it could be rain or snow or hail or sleet. Moving on for more vocabulary, we've got turbulent. Now if you've been on an aeroplane, you might have heard of the word turbulent. And you might realise that it's a little bit bumpy. Weather can be turbulent too, which means it's quite up and down. It's quite volatile, it could be really windy one minute and then a little bit calmer and then really rainy and a little bit calmer. So it's quite up and down. Moving on, I've got the word aroma. Does anyone know what aroma is? Aroma is smell. The aroma of the freshly cut grass, the smell of the cut grass. Predominant. You got a predominant feature that's a main feature so the overwhelming salty smell is much more predominant which means it's much stronger it's much more smellable if that's even a word okay and then the last one is intermittent intermittent means occasional the occasional smell of lavender you can't tell it all of the time but sometimes when the wind blows, you might be able to smell the lavender a little bit too. Okay. So, our I can again, I can use the text to help understand vocabulary. And our keys to success. Read the question carefully. Locate the section in the text. Read around the word to help you understand its meaning. Answer the question using a full sentence. Explain further if needed using because. So I'll show you what that means. I've got my question. So it says, read the question carefully. What could the word lies mean in this sentence? So I've got the section in the de text. Locate the section. Below the jaggy cliffs lies an ocean of the dullest grey. And I'm reading around the word. I'm looking at the whole of that sentence to help me understand just that one word there. Now it says, answer the question using a full sentence. So that is what I am going to do now. 
Let me just change the colour so you can see it nice and clearly. The word lies could mean. Now I'm just going to have a little think. What could the word lies mean? Now I know if you lie down in bed, you're quite flat, you're quite still. Not sure whether the ocean's going to be still. But I am going to put that in and I'm going to explain it a little bit more in my answer. The word lies could mean staying flat. I'm trying really hard, children, not to type heavily on my keyboard. As I know you've said, all you can hear is tap, tap, tap like a dinosaur. So I'm listening to your advice and I'm trying really hard. The word lies could mean staying flat and still below the cliffs. I don't think it will be still though or because I capital for I ought not equals I know the weather is bad hard to look at the screen and type at the same time children I know the weather is bad and I again can see the waves lapping at the shore with my full stop <laughs> so the word lies in that sentence below the jagged dragon cliffs <coughs> Sorry. Lies just is, is an ocean of a dullish grey, but lies gives a bit more of the impression that it's flat, that it's below. Not necessarily still, but it's it's there. So today <coughs> oh, I've got a cough all of a sudden. You have got lots of questions to answer. Now in your folder on Teams, you have got a few different documents. You've got the waggle, you've got questions, then you've got scaffold questions. Now, the scaffold questions are the same, exactly the same questions, but they've got the sentence starters. So if we find writing in a full sentence answer quite tricky, the same as we do in class, there are the sentence stems to help you with that. So if you want to choose that option you can do or you can just answer the questions and you can use the questions that are on here as well but you are going to need to look at the waggle at the same time so question one what color is the water two what does the word jagged tell you about the cliffs number three what makes the living things in the ocean spring into action number four what is above the ocean Number five, what covers the cliffs? Number six, what does the phrase eaten at the edges tell you about the cliffs? Number seven, what do you think is meant by angry looking clouds? Number eight, what does the word precipitation mean and can you give any examples of this? Number nine, what word does the writer use to explain the contrast between the cliffs and the water? Number 10, why would the grass feel soothing compared to the cliffs? Number 11, what two things can be smelled whilst walking along the cliff edge? <coughs> Number 12, use words and phrases from the text to complete the table describing the cliffs and the water. Now, the answers to all of those questions are on another document in Teams and it says answers. You can mark this yourself, but do not look at the answers until you've had a go yourself, okay? Then stretch, so if you want a little bit more of a challenge, it says use the dictionary or the internet to find definitions, so to find the meanings of the following words, rhythm, horde, horizon, luscious, contrast, tempestuous, precipitation, looming, turbulent, predominant, intermittent. And then 14 says choose at least four of these words and write them in a new sentence. For example, a predominant feature of an elephant is its long trunk. 
Now a lot of those words I have discussed with you earlier on in the video so that might help you a little bit. But if that's another activity that you would like to have a go at then feel free. Okay so I'd like you to pause the video now and I want you to complete the written task that you've been given. Choose your own learning, you know what you need whether you need just the questions or whether you need the sentence stems to help you and you know whether to push yourself to have a go at the stretch at the end too. So pause the video and complete those now. Well done children, you've worked really hard doing all of those activities. Well, last little bit today. Tomorrow you are going to describe a character. What comes to mind when you think of Grendel? So think of our Beowulf story and Grendel is the scary terrifying creature that comes down to Mead Hall and eats all of those people. What do you think he will look like? Jot down some words or phrases that could help you. So anything that springs to mind when you think of Grendel, what do you think it could look like? Um, even draw a little picture if that will help you. Just anything that will support you in your learning a little bit tomorrow. So I can't wait to do this lesson. I love character descriptions. So that's the end of this lesson today. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to speaking to you all again tomorrow. Bye.